welcome. We will soon shout hallelujah because God will do new things. The barrier will be fulfilled soon. Failure will be forgotten. Shout hallelujah because God will do new things. Reversing the sound of glory. Hallelujah to our King. We will soon shout hallelujah. Because God will do new things. To all miracles of love. There shall be celebration. Shout hallelujah. Because God will do new things, reversing the sound of fluid. Hallelujah to the King. We will soon shout hallelujah. Because God will do new things. What oh, 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 is the moon? So for no shout hallelujah because you we do no thing reversing the sound of glory hallelujah to okay. hallelujah God will do new things God will do new things God will do new things even now God will do new things the whole will be forgotten. The sorrow will be over. The shame will be over. The reproach will be over. Coronavirus will be over. Affliction will be over. Shame will be over. Lack of need will be over. Why? Because God will do new things. That is the God that we are serving. And I know He will do new things. For tonight, by the Spirit of the Lord, again, I continue with the series that I started a couple of days ago. As I read from the word of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm reading verse 55. All dead, where is the sting? All grave, where is your victory? All grave, where is your victory? All grave, where is your victory? Today, I'll be able to establish the fact that what we call grave is more than the whole we God where we bury people. It's more than the blood that we put together, the fancy blood we put together where we bury our loved ones. It's more than that. There's a spirit behind it. There's a force a part behind it that swallow destiny. You hear what the Bible says? Oh, great, where is your victory? Oh, great, where is your victory? I will be talking to grave. As it were, as it's a human being, where is your victory? That means there's something more spiritual about the grave. And I remember I've shared with you one, some of the major characters of the grave. I told you that grave is the house of the dead. And I began to share several things why people die and why they die before their time and how we can deal with the spirit of death. Number two, we talk about the fact that what we call grave also is a place of silence. And I remember I was talking about how many life doesn't have been silenced. Nobody is hearing about them again. But from today, no power, no force will silence your voice. No power, no force will silence your destiny. Everything that has been silenced in your life, they are coming up again. Because God will be doing something new in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. For tonight, I have a focus. And my focus tonight is this, which also one of the characteristics of the grave. I'll be dealing with the subject of weeping. Mekosuatayaba. I decree under God, I'm hearing, you will not weep. You will not weep. You will not weep. None of us will weep. We will not weep over our loved ones. We will not weep over our children. We will not weep over our husband, over our wife. We will not weep over our business. Every root cause of weeping, as I'm praying now, I terminate them in the name of Jesus. It cannot, there shall be no weeping in your house. There shall be no weeping in your family. I terminate the power and response of weeping in the name of Jesus. Weeping, as it was, one of the major characteristics of the graveyard. It doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter at what age. Every time people approach or they go to the graveyard, there's one thing where they say, people weep. Before they get there, they weep. And the last place most time people will see is the graveyard. The moment they get there and stand now to bury their loved one, you will see people now start crying again. They weep and weep and weep and weep. And sometimes even some will be trapped. I mean, as if they should throw them inside the grave. As if they should just throw them inside the hole and let them bury them with their loved ones. So, the graveyard, as you are, the grave is the place of weeping. Now, there's a power behind that. Today, people weep for so many reasons. 
And I just mentioned a few of them, but that's not my focus. My focus is only to attack the part of the spirit behind it. I want to assure you today there is a part behind it. There's a spirit behind it. There are reasons why people weep over and over. In the name of the Lord, from this day, as I'm praying, you're weeping hence now. The Bible said, don't weep in and do it tonight. Joy is coming in the morning. I'm prophesying as a servant of Jehovah God. Your season of joy is here now. Your time of joy is here now. In every area of your life where you have listened to weep before, you will begin to have joy now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, what happened here? Often times, people weep when, when they lost their loved ones. And that has happened to all of us. At one time or another, it happened to everybody. Your loved ones, somebody so precious to you, somebody so dear to you, maybe a family member, maybe a friend, maybe a colleague. It happens to everybody. And at that time, it doesn't matter who you are. Even if you're a man, you will not know when tears will start coming. In the name of the Lord, what will make us weep we end, is ending today in the name of Jesus. I'm aware there's what we call tears of joy. That's a different thing. But I'm talking about weeping. Eh? What brings sorrow? What makes people unhappy? Of course, number two, people also weep when, for example, there's an accident or a calamity. Suddenly they discover that what they have helped me, the what they are having, and they are keeping that the was so pressure, is gone. And you see people weeping. Sometimes when you see accident, sometimes you may not even be involved in the accident, but you come to the point where it happened. Saying the incident is enough to make anybody cry. Except you are not having blood in your sister. Except you are not human being. Just witnessing something is enough to bring tears on your, on your face. I decree today it ends in the name of Jesus. Three, people can weep also when there is a fire outbreak or any other terrible calamities. And that many times happens everywhere. I decree in the name of the Lord, none of us will push on that again in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, people weep also when there is what you call disappointment, major disappointment. Where you have, your hope is on something and you are believing God for it, you, you are too assured that this is what it's going to be. Maybe you are going to get a job. Maybe there will be somebody that promised you. Maybe they are going to, you are getting a business. Maybe there is somebody that is promoting you. Maybe they are going to get married. And suddenly, there's a major disappointment. And before you know it, you just know where the tribes will come from. I speak under God. If you have ever been disappointed before, it ends today. That disappointment concerning your marriage, it ends today. That disappointment concerning your business, it ends today. That disappointment concerning what you are expecting, it ends today. The power and the force behind it, I come against the power in the name of Jesus. There can go no, 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 no reason why people weep. There are so many. Many weep because they lost their investment. They put in so much into a business. They put in so much into a project. Expecting that with time they begin to reap and they begin to have profit. And suddenly something happens. Like what is going on in our country and all over the world. Imagine someone that put in so many millions of naira into some businesses now. Expecting that in the next few days and weeks, I'm going to begin to make money. Suddenly, coronavirus started. And that's the end of it. There are many gurus on the oceans now and you cannot claim them. There are many who are supposed to travel to China, for example, and they cannot go again. So many things have been affected. There's no doubt about it. Many life and business have been battered already, shattered already. This can make anybody weep. It can make anybody weep. But I've come in the name of the Lord. That though weeping and dear tonight, joy comes in, in the morning. I want you to trust the Lord. In situations like this, there's only one who can help. That's the Almighty God. I cannot, your friend may not, your family member may not, even God may have the limitation. There are things they may not be able to do, but there is God in heaven who can make bring something out of nothing, who can turn the day to night, who can revive the irreversible. He's the only one, only one can trust that I should trust in time like this. I want to beg for humility. Never rely on your strength or energy. It has failed many people, it can fail any of all. This is the time to hook to God, to get connected to God. I rely on Jehovah. He's the only one that can never change, and he's the only one that will never fail. We can go on and on and on and talk about many reasons why people weep. But one thing is, when weeping come, joy flies out. When weeping come, sorrow enter. When weeping come, confusion enter. When weeping come, people eat and doesn't, they don't even know they are eating. When weeping come, even many times you even lose your appetite. You can go on and on and on and on and you understand what I'm talking about. But my message today is this. There is a power that breaks the yoke of weeping. That power is coming to your home today. That power is coming to your life today. That power is coming to your family today. Whoever has been weeping around you will not weep again. Tell them, God, say the law to the servant, weeping is ending now. In every home where they are hearing me now, weeping is ending now. In every home where they are listening to me now, weeping is ending now. I do not know what happened before now, but I'm speaking as a messenger of God, weeping is ending now. Weeping is ending now. Weeping is ending now. Weeping is ending now. Proshikayaba, weeping is ending now. Krakasaba is ending now. The spirit behind it, I curse in the name of the Lord. It's one of the major characteristics of the grave. It's whooping. It's whooping. 
That's why we are going to address that spirit today. We are going to come again the power behind it today. We are going to say, no, enough is enough. I want to say to you, if there is a man that is ready to seek God, God will step in, sir. The Bible will call it concerning a man in the scripture, we call him, Elias a, man, Elias a man like us, he pray earnestly, persistently, consistently, that it will not rain. And the Bible says, for three and not yet, there was no rain. That is the God we are serving. No rain. Because a man chooses to pray. Beloved brothers and sisters, I want to challenge you. The time we are now is not the time for gossips. The time we are now is not the time you spend all your days, hours on social media and go. The time we are now is not the time to just look up and down, you don't do anything. Is the time to cry to God? Is the time to go on our face before God in all the and say, God, step into this matter? Ah, please allow all of us to show that this one is more than ordinary. We need God. We need God. I need God. You need God. Let us humble ourselves and seek God. I believe God with all my heart. Things will change. Weeping will hand. You have quite reason to weep before. You will weep no more. In the name of the Lord. The heart and the power sponsoring weeping is coming to an end today in your life. In the name of the Lord. Maybe you are there, you are listening to me, you are a victim of all kind of manipulation at all from your family member, from friends, from colleagues. And that's why you, you can't just believe people can do that to you. And that's what they're going to Hear me out. Weeping is coming to an end. Why? Because there is a God in heaven who reverses his story, who changes people's story. He will change your story in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm remembering as I'm talking to you the story of Joseph. When his father sent him to go and check on his brothers, and the Bible said, When they saw him coming, they said to them, Say, Yeah, come here, the dreamer. What should we do? Let's kill this guy and just let's forget him and let's see what comes out of his dream. But because God, what, he has God behind him, eventually when he got to them, they could not kill him. One of them said, Well, instead of killing this guy, let's do something else. Let's just throw him somewhere and throw him into some pit and let's leave him there. And after a while, another one suggested, Well, what is it's of no use to us living in the pit? Yeah, is the sheep smell like passing by? Let us make some money out of him and let us sell him. Let us go and die somewhere. And that was it. Now, I imagine as at the time they sold Joseph, as at the time the Ishmael were taking him away, I'm trying to imagine, I will be looking back, say, ah, can I believe this happened to me? This my own blood brothers, we are children, his own father. I am just trying to imagine as you are handing him over and you are collecting the money, what will be going to the heart of Joseph? What will Joseph be thinking? And as we are taking them, is this life? Can this happen? But I'm happy. The story of Joseph never ended when the father was sold. At the end of the day, God took him, God in his mercy by his grave. Make sure he did not just survive the problem. God took him to the top. God made him to become the king in Egypt. I'm talking to you now about the God who knows tomorrow, who can handle all situations of life. Never allow your destiny to be buried because of one disappointment or the other, because of one shock or the other. It's normal in life. Nobody expects it, but sometimes it happens. But all unto God. He has not changed. He has not changed. He has not changed. He is God that rescued those who can trust Him. The time we have is a time to put our trust in the Lord. The time we have is a time to cry to God. The time we have is a time to rely on God. This is the time to put our faith to work. Everything around you may be saying something and just say, God, I just trust you. Lord, I just believe you and live the rest with him. It will surprise you. It will change your story. It will give you a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. And like the song we just render now, God will do anything. I believe God with you will tend to do anything. In our nation, Nigeria, God will do anything. All over the world, God will do anything. With all that is going on, I'm, I know God will see do anything. Even now, God will do anything. I just choose to believe. I don't have another to do. This time to just believe it. You just have to believe God. You just have to believe. That is what we call faith. Faith is believing God, not situation, not circumstance. Faith is believing. Faith is believing. Faith is believing. The Bible calls for some the elders and they say all of them believe. Even though they know that they, they not that they are able to enter the problem, but they believe. They believe against everything. They just have hope that God cannot fail. And God was counted to all of them for righteousness. I want to beg you, just trust God. Just believe God. It is better to believe and keep believing until you see the miracle than not believing at all. In actual fact, trusting God, believing God will give you strength, will give you hope, will sustain you in time like this. The news out there can make anybody go crazy. The news out there can make anybody become, you know, what about this story? The news out there can change everything negative around you. And that's why over the, I mean, since this problem started about three, four weeks ago, I kept advising, I want to advise you again. It's good to know what goes around you, but please be careful what I call, I mean, overfeeding yourself with negative news. You have to be careful. Don't become an authority over I mean, coronavirus matters. Be an authority over the things of the law. Know what is going on. Know what you need to do. Know what you need to avoid. Periodical has given instruction. That's okay. It's normal. It's right. All of us have to do that. But beyond that, 
Don't feed yourself almost every minute with all this bad news. If you are not careful, your faith will